if you run the numbers on robo taxis, uh, it's it's kind of nutty. It's nutty good for, for, from a financial standpoint. I would be shocked if we do not achieve full self driving safer than a human this year. I would be shocked. What's up, guys? I'm Emmett Short. I put together a supercut of all the moments where Elon Musk talks about full self driving in yesterday's earnings call. Because uh, I'm watching it and then. I'm looking at the aftermath in the stock market and I'm just seeing red, 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 red. It's funny because ARK Invest did a six hour presentation of their big ideas just the day before and Tasha Keeney and others are talking about how civilization shifting the full self-driving technology is going to be and what a huge impact it's going to have on society, like the biggest impact of any technology in history. And then Elon Musk gets on the earnings call the next day and says the exact same thing. But when I tell people that the car I have downstairs in the parking garage is gonna go out and be a robo taxi for me and bring home the bacon, I'm the crazy person. I'm the crazy guy. And I think that's the general reaction of society at large because this information keeps getting put out there and it does not move the stock price. Anyway, rant over, listen to Elon, and then I'll show you ARC. Full self-driving. So over time, we think full self-driving will become the most important source of profitability for Tesla. If you run the numbers on robo-taxis, uh, it's, it's kind of nutty. It's nutty good for, for, from a financial standpoint. And I think we are completely confident at this point that it will be achieved. My personal guess is that we'll achieve full self-driving this year. Data safety level significantly greater than, than a person. The cars in the fleet essentially becoming self-driving by a software update, I think might might end up being the, the biggest uh, increase in asset value for, of any asset class in history. It will also have a profound impact on improving safety and on accelerating the world towards sustainable energy through vastly better asset utilization. And with the rapid development of FSD, software-based profits will ultimately become a strong addition to the profits generated by selling hardware. The software portion of the business, I think, is the one to really pay attention to. As full self-driving features uh, get rolled out to more and more folks. I mean, for me personally, I prefer to drive my car with the FSD beta on. I think as more and more people experience that, take rates there. And then as we work towards the robo taxi space, there's actually quite a bit of upside on margins from a software perspective. Everything pales in comparison to the value of a robo taxi or, or personal driving. I mean, that just tends to overwhelm everything. You just go from having an asset that has a utility of perhaps 12 hours a week for a passenger car to maybe around 50 or 60 hours a week. So a 5x increase in the utility of, an, of, of the asset. Cost didn't change. It's kind of blows your mind. Frankly, being safer than a human is a low standard, not a high standard. <laughs> People are very, very lossy, often distracted, tired, texting. So it's remarkable that we don't have more accidents. Actually being better than human, I think is just relatively straightforward, frankly. I mean, how do you be a thousand percent better or 10,000 percent better? That's much, much harder. I think anyone who's been in the FSD beta program, if they were just to plot the progress of the beta in interventions per mile, it's obviously trending to very small number of interventions per mile and pace of improvement is fast. And there's, there are several profound improvements to the FSD stack that are coming you know, in the next few months. I would be shocked if we do not achieve full self-driving safer than a human this year. I would be shocked. I think the FSD stuff, you really don't want to be looking in the rear view mirror. It will not be a good indicator for the future. You need to look out the front windscreen because it is such a profound step change. Effectively, long term, every car will have FSD and the value of that will be a very big number. If you just look at this as asset utilization and you have a passenger car, which normally is driven maybe one and a half hours a day on average, maybe 10, 10, 12 hours a week. A lot of cars in parking lots. So we're spending money not just driving the cars, but storing them all over the place. You can get rid of a lot of parking lots if you have a car that is operating all the time. There will be a challenge with traffic. You know, we've got like this little tiny baby company, the Warren Company, which I initially thought as a joke, <laughs> but now it's, I think it actually could be quite essential to alleviating the insane traffic that will happen when cars are autonomous because you reduce the pain of, of travel and you reduce the cost of travel so dramatically that there will be a crazy number of cars on the road. I think it will be cheaper to go point to point with a robo taxi, which is an autonomous Tesla, which 
every car we've made in the past three or four years will, will be capable of that than a bus or a subway. It'll cost less than the subsidized value of a bus ticket. So people are not going to take the bus. If it costs you, I don't know, for argument's sake, two bucks to travel 10 miles point to point, nobody's taking the bus, especially in cold weather or it's dark or maybe a little bit dangerous or how that, you know, door to door. The people just do not understand how profound a change this is. It's not like some little feature. It's like the most profound software upgrade maybe in history. Millions of cars suddenly have four or five times the utility than they used to have. I don't actually know how to quantify that financially, except that it's some big number. If there is no $25,000 vehicle being worked on, is it <laughs> really realistic to think that you can sell more than 3 million vehicles with two very high volume cars and Cybertruck in 2024. It's apparent from the questions that the gravity of full self-driving is not fully appreciated. If an asset has five times more utilization than the, in effect, it's like it's like dividing the cost of that asset by five. If you have a $50,000 car, it's like having a $10,000 car or if it's sudden better than that because still you don't need anyone to drive. So the person can be engaged in productivity or amusement instead of having to onerously drive through traffic. It's probably better than five. Times. Basically, if, if the cost of our cars did not change at all, we would still sell as many as we could possibly make. Okay, that gets me excited. I'm excited. But maybe it's bullshit to you. Maybe you think it's all bullshit. You know who doesn't think it's bullshit? ARK Invest. Autonomous mobility and robotaxi in particular, we believe is going to be the most um, economically productivity generating innovation of all time. I'm Tasha Keeney. I'm an analyst at ARK. I work with Sam on our autonomous technology and robotic strategy. By 2026, we think could be an $11.7 trillion uh, bucket of public enterprise value ascribed to these systems. Autonomous technology could allow for this unlock where you turn um, previously unaccounted for economic activity, driving your car, um, into economic activity. So maybe you'll be uh, reading work emails, doing work, or if you're Brett, maybe you're binge watching Netflix in the backseat of this vehicle. Um, $10 trillion in service revenue. This is the, uh, the revenues that we expect off of the taxi platforms themselves. Um, an economic gain for the, for the preservation of life. Um, again, we're preventing uh, over a million people of dying in auto accidents every year, and they go on to be productive members of society. And then um, about a trillion dollars of incremental autonomous car sales. So if you look at the graph on the right, all in all, um, going back to the 1850s, looking at the steam engine, um, robots in the 1990s to the early 2000s, and IT from a similar time period as robots, um, those all contributed less than 1%. Um, those, all those were all very extremely meaningful, um, but their impact on annual GDP was less than a percent. We think that the impact from robotaxis could be uh, two to three percentage points on annual GDP by 2030. Um, so again, this is one of the most meaningful innovations that we will see in our lifetime. Okay, there you have it. So it's going to be an $11 trillion opportunity for the companies, the platforms that create the robotaxi networks, but it's going to create a $26 trillion boost to the economy at large. I mean, yet right now the economy is tanking. Everybody's trying to be conservative, pulling out of growth stocks and crypto. It's inflation, interest rates are rising, Omicron. So I just want to be one of the people talking about the amazing things coming out that are going to not only be awesome for uh, Tesla stock, but for the economy at large and for humanity at large. We're in the knee of the curve. Let me know in the comments, you think Elon's full of shit? Do you think it could come out this year? And does it matter if it comes out this year, next year, 2024? All right, guys, check the description for all the ways you can support the channel. I'm not gonna, there's tons. Uh, I'm working on a vlog about stand-up comedy coming out soon. So if you subscribed for this video and then you see that video and it's totally different, try not to unsubscribe. I know it's tough. I'm sorry. I'm just doing what I like. <laughs>